start the, the, the meeting. Good morning. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. And um, moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that the Committee of Adjustment agenda dated March 14th, 2022, be adopted. All those in favor? That's carried. <coughs> and are there any declarations of uh, pecuniary interest? No. Seeing none. Uh, let's see. And we'll have the adoption of the minutes. Moved by Member Queen, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that the minutes dated February 14th, 2022, be adopted and approved as circulated. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. And Rachel, would you like to do your little screen there? Yeah, let me turn it down, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I will make a few required statements and I'll explain the procedures of the hearing. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the committee adjustment present are Chair Alan Edwards, Member Joe Quinn, Member Lisa Grogan Green, and Member Sharon Creaser. I confirm we have a quorum. I can also confirm that senior staff and planning staff are present. Public input on this March 14th, 2022 agenda was invited to the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. It should be noted the motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. Now I will explain the hearing process. The planner will provide an explanation and purpose of the application, the date the notice was circulated, and will present any submissions received. The planner will also provide the planning staff's comments. Committee will then hear from the applicant or applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. Committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. If you're here to speak on an application, please wait to raise your hand in Zoom until the planner presents the relevant application. Committee will then hear the applicant or the applicant's agent respond to any questions or concerns raised. Committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or staff. Committee will debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing. Please note that the effect of written and oral submissions on decisions of applications for consent and minor variances and the reasons for minor variance decisions as both required under the Planning Act will be pre-populated with standard wording. However, committee may decide to add reasons and or effects to the standard wording after voting on a decision. It must be noted that the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in discussion. There is a 20 day appeal period from the date of the decision. In the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you are present at the hearing, please provide us your name and mailing address. Any presentation is limited to five minutes. Sorry, when you present at the hearing, please provide your name and mailing address. Any presentation is limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by committee. Please note the resolutions are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing decisions, as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean an application is going to be approved. And one last thing, please take down the pink notice signs that were posted in your property to advertise today's meeting. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Mahon. And I will also read this here. Today's meeting is being live streamed and recorded on the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and YouTube channel. By participating in the open public meeting today, 
you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded and posted online. Thank you. <coughs> and the first application is B124, 125, 126. And uh, that's Miss Darling. Good morning. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The first application to be heard is consent application B124, 125, 126, 127, 21 ML in the name of Gardner, Snyder, and Wright. The subject properties are known municipally as 1289 Peninsula Road, units 3, 7, and 11. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 27 to 30 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The application, applicants propose to grant right-of-ways over parts of an existing private road. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 17 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. First submission is, was received by the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko. He commented that the private road has not been re reviewed by Public Works and road access for emergency services may be limited and or unavailable through the proposed road. Civic addressing changes may be required, and if they are, changes would need to be completed at no cost to the township but and to the satisfaction of the township. The second submission is from the township's chief building official, Nick Snyder, and he has no objections. The third submission is from the district municipality of Muskoka, and they comments were received from Curtis Sivret, which is the district planner, and they have no objection on the application. Staff have prepared a detailed staff report for committee's consideration. Staff have recommended standard conditions of consent requiring that a registrable description of each severed lot right away be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. And that confirmation be received that the township is satisfied with the retained lots are satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with any existing sewage system be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Yes. Agent? Okay. Right. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Uh, it's Wayne Simpson. Um, Wayne Simpson and Associates, 3 76 King William Street, Huntsville, P1H1E4. I'm here as agent for the Snyder, Wright, and Gardner uh, families. Um, and uh, I appreciate what the planner's done. Uh, the, the matter is really straightforward. There's an existing roadway that was a uh, private driveway that was uh, constructed by the owners cooperatively. and. They have uh, current arrangements for reciprocal rights of way, but those are 21 years less a day. So they want to formalize that and provide that the right of ways be in perpetuity. Uh, and I'm available to answer any questions if there are any of the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Simpson. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in, speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition to this application? Other questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Grogan Green. Be it resolved that consent be granted for application B 124, 125, 126, 127, 21 ML, Gardner Snyder Wright, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description D of the separate lot right away <laughs> be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, Confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that retained lots are satisfactory for on site sewage disposal, that any problems identified with any existing sewage system be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Have a good day. Thank you. And the next application is B, 128, sorry, 128, 21 ML, 
Ted Smith's uh, construction. I believe Ms. Walker is looking after that one. Thank you, Chair Edwards, and good morning, everyone. The next application to be heard is consent application B slash 128 slash 21 slash ML in the name of Ted Smith Construction. The subject lands are located at 1017 Maple Avenue. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 45 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to sever a portion of the property and add it to this and add the severed portion to the abutting lot. The land that is to be severed contains a small building with an associated sun deck and a prefabricated storage shelter. The benefiting lot contains a single story dwelling. The consent application involves a change in common lot lines only and no new lots are being created. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 17 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received to date. The first submission is by the Township's Chief Building Official, Nick Snyder, advising there are no Ontario Building Code concerns. The second submission is by Public Works staff advising they have no concerns. The third submission is by Bell Canada advising they have no concerns. A detailed planning report has been prepared for committee's consideration. Staff have no concerns with this application and have recommended the standard conditions for a lot addition. They have, we've recommended that the existing building and associated sun deck and storage shelter be removed from the retained lot and that a deeming bylaw be passed to ensure that the severed portion will merge on title with the benefiting lot. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And uh, is the applicant or applicants each in here wish to speak on this? The applicant's here. I'm going to bring him in. I'm not sure if he... Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm Ed Smith. Uh, I'm here with my son, Jake Smith, representing Ted Smith Construction. Thank you for your time. Um, okay. uh, well explained in advance. Uh, we're just really here to make ourselves available for any questions in regards uh, okay. um, to the proposal in the back, so. Could you give us your, your uh, correct mailing address and your postal code, please? Certainly, it's uh, Post Office Box 211 Bala. POC 1AO. Okay, thank you very much. So you're just here to answer any questions? Yeah, as I say, it was well, it was well explained. We're just uh, yeah. severing off a small section up in the back corner of, of the property uh, and joining some to our existing house, which has a little bit of an undersized lot for, you know, for our preference. So we're just trying to clean things up in behind the house here. Great. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak in support? No. Anyone in opposition? No. no. Okay, are there questions from the members? None. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Grogan Green. Be it resolved that consent be granted per application B12821 ML, Ted Smith Construction of Bala Limited, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description deed of the severed lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, that a legal undertaking be submitted in order to confirm that the separate lot will merge in title to the lot it is being added to upon registration of the transfer slash deeds, which will require the passing of a deeming bylaw. And three, that the existing building associated sun deck and prefabricated storage shelter be removed. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? And that is carried. And the next application is B12921 ML LAM. And I believe that is Miss Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is consent application B slash 129 slash 21 slash ML in the name of LAM. The subject lands are located at 1073 Russell Lake Road 1. 
I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 64 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to create one additional lot within the hamlet of Bent River with frontage on Rosso Lake Road 1. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 14 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and two comments have been received to date. The first submission is by the township's chief building official, Nick Snyder, advising that there are no Ontario building code concerns. The second submission is by public work staff advising that approval of the severance should be subject to confirmation of the availability of an entrance permit for the severed lot. A detailed staff report has been prepared for committee's consideration. Staff have concerns with the application and have therefore recommended an adjournment. It appears that a large portion of the subject lands is likely considered to be a wetland that forms part of Skeleton River, which is located in pro close proximity to the north side of Rosso Lake Road 1. And it appears that this wetland may be located along most and possibly all of the severed lots road frontage. Given that provincial district and township policies all require the features and functions of wetlands to be protected from development. Staff have recommended that the application be adjourned to provide an opportunity for a qualified environmental consultant to assess the lands and complete as necessary a satisfactory scoped environmental impact study. The intent of the study would be to ensure that the severed lot can be developed for residential purposes without negatively impacting natural heritage features and functions and it can be developed without negative impacts. The study would identify a suitable building envelope and driveway alignment. I have no further comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? The applicant is here. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairman, Committee. Uh, this is uh, Jeremy Lamb. 1073, good morning. Uh, 1073 Rosso Lake Road 1, uh, postal code P0B1M0, Utterson, Ontario. Um, I'd just like to, to thank the uh, the committee or the Muskoka Lakes staff for helping with this. I'm not a developer. I'm doing this all on my own. Um, I purchased this property in 2020. I have, in the last year, built a new home on the, 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 the remaining lot that I want to keep. Uh, the reason I wanted to sever is my brother is interested in purchasing it and developing the property and building a home, so on. Uh, this land that for the last 50 years has been touched. It was originally all farmland at one time. This was all pasture. So the reason for there being low lying area with, with water is just the uh, there has been any maintenance to the ditches. Uh, the west part of the property, I've revamped the ditches and deterred all the water and so on. So it's it's not... Uh, much to be done like I'd like to ask maybe if the township could have a look at it uh, in May um, to, to reassess it to as opposed to ha having consultants just to, to push the value of the property up I'd like to be able to sell it at a reasonable rate and create more housing in the area so on so okay. <clears throat> that it okay thank you very much if they ask is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application no. Anyone wish to speak in opposition to this application? Questions from the members? As uh, the, the, uh, the planners have asked for this to be adjourned for uh, an environmental assessment, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I, I, yes? agree, with, I agree with the adjourning oh. it and having a proper assessment. Why? Me too. Are you? Okay, thank Same. you. I think, sir, we're going to adjourn this and you'll have to get an environmental assessment done. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And the next application is B, 
130, 21 ml of Coombs, and that is Ms. Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is consent application B slash 130 slash 21 slash ML in the name of Coombs. The subject lands are located at 1017 Houston Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 85 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is to create one additional lot with frontage on Houston Road. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 17 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act, and two comments have been received to date. The first submission is by the Township's Chief Building Official, Nick Snyder, advising that there are no Ontario Building Code concerns. The second submission is by Public Works staff advising that approval of the severance should be subject to confirmation of the availability of an entrance permit for the severed lot. A detailed staff report has been prepared for committee's consideration. Staff have recommended that the application be approved subject to several standard conditions of consent. These involve a registrable description of the severed lot and registered copy of the reference plan to submitted to the secretary and treasurer. That confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with the existing sewage system on the retained lot be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. That confirmation be received that an entrance permit from Public Works Department of the Township of Muskoka Lakes is available and for, it, for an entrance along the severed lots frontage on Houston Road and that a cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant or the entire lands, whichever is less. Staff have also recommended that the severed lot be made to site plan control. A wetland borders the southerly and westerly proposed boundaries of the severed lot. Although several accessible development envelopes exist, which are located a significant distance from the wetland, through the site plan control process, which would be triggered at the time of building permits are applied for, staff would be able to undertake a site visit and assess the chosen building location to consider the most appropriate driveway alignment and other factors such as proximity to the wetland, vegetation retention, and stormwater management. If a building site is chosen that is in closer proximity to the wetland, staff would be able to request the completion of a scoped environmental impact study to ensure that there will not be any negative impacts to the wetlands features or functions. I have no further comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And uh, is the applicant or applicant aging here wish to speak on this? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I'm kind of new at this, but um, my name is Ian Coombs from uh, 1017 Houston Road. Uh, just uh, thought I would uh, sit in on the meeting to see what's involved with this. I've never done this before. Okay, that's fine, sir. And uh, we'll need your uh, your uh, postal code, your address oh, and postal code, please. Um, 1017 Houston Road, uh, postal code P1L1X4. Okay. And is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? No. Anyone speak in opposition? No. Uh, are there questions from the members? No. Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Quinn. Be it resolved that consent be granted for application B130 21 ML Coombs, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description deed of the severed lot and any required right of way be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer along with the registered copy of the reference plan. Two, that the severed lot be made subject to site plan control. Three, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the separate lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and any problems identified with any existing sewage system on the retained lot be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Four, the confirmation be received that the entrance permit from the Public Works Department of the Township of Spoke Lakes is available for the entrance along the separate lots frontage on Houston Road. And five, that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of 
for the assessed value of a newly created vacant lot for the entire lands, whichever is less. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, yes, uh, Member Green. Sorry, we can't hear you. I think that they did, unless I'm looking at the wrong file, but they mentioned that there would be potentially a zoning bylaw change around that wetland as a cleanup eventually. Is that mentioned? I believe that would be looked at from site plan control. Is that right? Through you, uh, Chair Edwards, um, yeah, certainly we had noted in the report that as part of a future housekeeping amendment, we could flag um, the portion of the wetland that's on the prop property um, for a rezoning. It's currently uh, only a portion is zoned EP1, which is not entirely uncommon. Um, but when an application such as this is submitted, it does bring the, the lands under a microscope and we would look to, uh, to clean that up. Okay, great. Does that answer your uh, question, Member Green? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other uh, questions or comments? Seeing none. Moved by Member Krogan Green, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B130 21 ML Tombs. Uh, Provide following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registered description. I think I read that already. I'm sorry. All those in favor. That is carried. Okay. And now we'll go on to uh, minor variances, and that's A2421, Graham. And that is Miss Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A8421 in the name of Graham. The subject property is known municipally as 1490 Afton Island Road, unit number eight. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 99 and 100 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a swim dock addition and reconstruct the boathouse. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage on a category one lake of 10%. The proposed lot coverage on the entire lot is 11%, which is or 6,294 square feet. Variance requested is 1% or 583 square feet over what is permitted. Relief is also requested from the maximum cumulative width for a dock of 75 feet. The proposed swim dock will increase the cumulative width to 85 feet. Variance requested is 10 feet. Notice of the public of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. Submissions were received from the township's public works technician, Tim Sopko, and he indicated that he has no objection. And the second is from the township's chief building official, Nick Snyder, and he has indicated no objection. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended approval subject to the land-based sleeping cabin and associated sun deck to be removed as intended and that a site plan agreement at, and that site plan agreement SBA 31 slash 10 be amended along with securities for revegetation of the former building and structure footprints. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here? The agent is here. Okay, both. Okay, thank you. Bring them in. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and committee members. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, my name is Zachary Allison. My address is 1615 Beatrice Townline, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1X4. Um, I'm here to speak on the Graham application. Um, I think because you guys have seen this last month, um, we made a few adjustments as per your recommendations. Uh, we have reduced the dock length from 66 feet 
as originally proposed to 50 feet. Um, that was in concern with uh, boat activity around that point area. Uh, we did only reduce it to 50 feet because there is a, a fairly large underwater shelf that comes out off this point. Um, there's only about three feet of water along the existing boathouse dock on the north side of that dock, which precludes really any boat parking on that side of the dock, which was one of the reasons for this new swim dock was just a little bit more boat parking when they have uh, friends over for the afternoon. Um, we have conceded to removing the sleeping cabin, um, which was a, a built form that was existing when the property was purchased by our client. Um, it was pretty disappointing, obviously, for our, our client to realize he was going to need to uh, remove a building in order to get a dock. But there were some issues, I think, on previous applications uh, showing incorrect lot coverage areas. Um, at this point, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I think we've We've kind of satisfied uh, with the planning department what they're looking for. And we do believe that the application is, is minor in nature. The only additional note that I'd like to make is uh, in the staff report, I believe it reads that the new boathouse will be built on existing dock. Um, we would just ask that uh, the wording be changed to the existing dock location and coverage. Um, we do intend when we redevelop that uh, boathouse to add the second story cabin, um, that we will change the slip orientation uh, just because of some rock hazards. It will also allow us to have a little bit more parking on the east side of the dock um, if we change our slip locations. We would maintain the existing footprint and location on the property though. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was brought to everyone's attention and uh, could be included in the, in the variance. If you guys have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thanks for your time and have a great day. Thank you very much, Mr. Allison. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? No. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Are there questions from the members? No questions? Moved by member Grogan Green, a second by member Creaser, be it resolved that application A8421 <coughs> amended Graham to permit the construction of a two-story boathouse on an existing dock and the construction of a swim dock is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 6,294 square feet or 11% of the entire lot. Two, to permit a cumulative dock width of 85 feet. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision are subject to the following conditions. One, an existing land-based sleeping cabin and associated sun deck be removed as intended and two site plan agreement SPA 3110 be amended along with securities for revegetation of the former building and structure footprint. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision and I will ask Mr. Sharp uh, on the existing dock can we should that be changed or uh, if, if they're moving it slightly? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind just turning down the volume out. Mm -hmm. Through you, uh, Chair Edwards, um, maybe if I could just ask Mr. Allison to clarify uh, what exactly is happening with the doc, because I'm a little unclear, but uh, it sounds to me uh, just based on your description that it may be slightly relocated, but the uh, the resultant width would remain the same as what's proposed. Is that correct, Mr. Allison? Um, Mr. Sharp, what we would recommend is that we'd like to um, change the slips to side slips on the boathouse. The dock location uh, on the property and the square footage covered by the dock and the width of the dock would not change. We're, we're happy with the location. We just need to change the slip orientation uh, to get away from that big rock shelf that you guys can see in the report. Um, there is an image uh, provided that shows a very large rock shelf uh, that comes out right to the end of the existing boathouse dock. Um, so we just wanted to change the orientation of those slips, but we would not change the width or location of the dock on the property. John. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Allison. Uh, I think um, in this case, it sounds like there's no need uh, for any change to the uh, to the variance. I think at most, uh, what, I would, what I would ask you to do is to send um, Ms. Darling a, an updated site plan, and that could be attached to the notice of decision just for clarity. But at the end of the day, the orientation of the slips themselves uh, don't have any bearing on the uh, the width. It would be more of a concern if uh, the, the location was was changing or the width was increasing from what had been. Uh, um, submitted to, to staff and circulated as part of this application. So I think we're, we're good to go. Great, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharp. And uh, are there any more questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? That's carried. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Mr. Allison. And the next application is A8621 Black, and that is Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-86-21 in the name of Black. The subject property is known municipally as 2628 Muskoka Road 169. <coughs> Sorry. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 125 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. The applicants propose to demolish an existing shed attached to the current dwelling to construct two new Sorry, a new two-story accessory building consisting of a garage on the lower level and storage and a sleeping cabin on the upper level and to construct an associated sun deck and stairs to replace in, um, in stairs um, with the existing garage or proposed garage and to replace the existing septic system in a new location. Relief is requested from the minimum lot frontage and area requirements for an existing lot of record. 100 feet of frontage and 15,000 square feet of area is required. The subject property has 71 feet of frontage and 12,380 12, square feet of area. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage of 8% or 990 square feet over the entire, entire lot. The proposed coverage is 8.7% or 1,076 square feet. The requested variance is 0.7% or 86 square feet. Relief is also requested from the minimum rear yard setback of 15 feet. The proposed garage is to be 4.5 feet from the rear lot line. The requested variance is 10.5 feet. Relief is requested from the minimum setback to a street of 25 feet. The proposed garage is to be 4.5 feet from the rear lot line and the associated sun deck is to be 17.5 feet. The requested variances are 20.5 feet and 7.5 feet respectively. Relief is requested from the minimum required setback from the high water mark for the new leaching bed distribution pipe. In this case, the minimum required setback to the exist is the existing setback of 66 feet. The proposed septic system leaching bed distribution pipe is to be 54 feet from the high water mark. The variance requested is 12 feet. Notices of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance and 11 submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, advising he has no objections. The second submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician. The submission is as follows. As a general statement, public works does not support the relaxation of setbacks from public roads unless there is a compelling reason to do so, or if the application provides an improvement or betterment of existing conditions that is in the best interest of the township. Muskoka Road 169 is a road under the jurisdiction and control of the District of Muskoka. District approval should be provided as a condition of approval for this application. The third submission is an email the applicants have provided from their pre-consultation with the district. This email states that the district has no issues with the variance being proposed. Letters of support have been received from the following property owners in the area. Um, G. Yang and Lim, 
Li Ming Su, owners of 1260 Highway 169, and these are the immediate property owners to the west. Sarah Gray of 1063 East Black Lake Road. Lechman Su Gudo, owner of 2626 Highway 169, which is the immediate neighbor to the east. Richard Flanagan and Rita Hesnick, owners of 1069 East Black Lake Road. Paul and Joe McQuery, owners of 1064 West Black Lake Road. Elizabeth Sleep, owners of 1049 East Black Lake Road. The Risebor family, owners of 1155 Torrance Road. Jason or Orchard, on behalf of David Al Jones Estate, owner of 1159 Torrance Road. All of these letters express support for the application and indicate no concerns with the proposed development. I can read any of the above submissions in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval of the application, staff have recommended the following conditions. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with any necessary securities to implement the requirements of the water quality impact assessment of prepared by Riverstone Environmental Solutions, and which is dated January 28th, 2022. And the second condition being recommended is that the existing attached shed be removed as intended. Staff have no further comments and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? The applicant is here. Okay, if you ring them in, please. Good morning, my name is Chantelle Black. Uh, good morning to the chair, members of committee and staff. Again, my name is Chantelle Black at 2628 Muskoka Road 169 in Torrance, Ontario, Peter Zero Charlie, one Michael Zero. And I am here to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Thank you very much. And that Ms. Black, is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Um, Anyone in opposition to this application? Okay, thank you. Uh, it, it's really nice to see that you went to all your neighbors and got letters of uh, support. It makes our job an awful lot easier, and thank you for that. Are there any questions from the uh, committee? Yes, Mr. Quinn. Um, I think the, the first letter to be read, there was some level of government or township that had a concern, and I don't know if that concern gets met as part of the approval or whether it needs to be written in um, with the, the recommendations, but I'd like to hear what that concern was again. Okay. Uh, yes, Ms. Walker, could you tell us that one, please? Yeah, through you, Chair Edwards, thank you. The concern was from the Township's Public Works Department regarding the setback to the public road. However, they note that the um, Muskoka Road 169 is under the jurisdiction and control of the District of Muskoka and have asked that district approval be provided as a condition of approval for this application. We have, um, Ms. Black has consulted with the district as part of the application and has provided confirmation the district has no concerns. Okay, I, I didn't know that it was the, that condition or concern had been, had been met. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Read the motion. Move on member Quinn, second member Grogan Green. Be it resolved that application AA621 Black to permit the, the uh, demolition of an existing shed attached to a dwelling to construction of a two story accessory building consisting of a garage in the lower level and storage and sleeping cabin in the upper level the construction of an associated sun deck with stairs, the replacement of an existing septic system in a new location is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to remit a two-story accessory building, an associated sun deck and stairs, and uh, replacement enlargement of an existing leaching bed distribution pipe on an undersized lot. Two, to remit a lot coverage of 
1,076 square feet or 8.7% of the entire lot. To bring it a two-story garage to be 4.5 feet at the closest point from the rear lot line. Four, to permit a two-story garage to be 4.5 feet at the closest point from the rear lot line abutting the street. Five, to permit a, an associated sun deck to be 17.5 feet at the closest point from the rear lot line abutting the street. And six, to permit a leaching bed distribution pipe to be 54 feet at the closest point from the high water mark. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and hereby subject to the following conditions. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with, with any necessary securities to implement the requirements of the water quality impact assessment repaired by Riverstone Environmental Solutions Inc. dated January 28, 2022 an existing attached shed be removed as intended. And any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you. You're welcome. And the next application is A8821 Huddle, and that is Ms. Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A8821 in the name of Huddle. The subject property is known municipally as 1043 Chone Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 179 to 185 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to reconstruct a single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck and associated dock. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage on a category one lake of 10%. The proposed lot coverage on the entire lot is gonna be 10.5% or 4,064 square feet. The proposed lot coverage within 200 feet is going to be 11% or 2,823 square feet. Variances requested is 0.5 of a percent or 176 square feet and 1% or 255 square feet respectively over what is permitted. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. Uh, submissions were received by the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko, and he has indicated no objection the second is from the township's chief building official, Nick Snyder, and he has also indicated no objection. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no concerns. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here? Do we have an agent? The agent's here. Good morning, Chair Edwards and committee, Terry Ledger, um, 167 Medora Street, Port Carling P0B1J0. Uh, so basically, uh, I think we're asking for a little bit of extra square footage. It's a shallow um, area. So for boat parking, uh, which as you can see, the new boat house is a little bit longer and moved out a little bit more. And uh, overall, I think we're improving the situation. The dock widths are coming into compliance. The setbacks are also uh, being brought into compliance. So we're sort of consolidating two dock areas and bringing it into one. I'm here to answer uh, any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Leiser. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? No. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? No. no. Other questions from the members? No? Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Quinn, to be resolved at application A8821 Huddle to reconstruct a single story boathouse with a roof 
top sun deck and associated dock is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 4,064 square feet or 10.5% of the entire lot. Two, to permit a lot coverage of 2,823 square feet or 11% of the lot area within 200 feet of the high water mark. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of approval. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. And the next application is A8921, Roads and Armitage. And uh, that is Ms. Parker again. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-89-21 in the name of Roads and Armitage. The subject property is known municipally as 1141 Coates Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 201 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to convert an existing dwelling into a sleeping cabin with an attached mechanical room and to construct a new dwelling. Relief is requested from the maximum floor area requirement for a sleeping cabin, which is 650 square feet. The proposed sleeping cabin is to have a floor area of 776 square feet. The requested variance is 126 square feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and seven submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, indicating he has no objections. The second submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, indicating the public works department has no comments. Letters of support have been received from the following area land owners. Christopher Rhodes, owner of 1122 Coat Road, Douglas Coat, owner of 1124 Coat Road, Katie Phillips, owner of 1120 Coat Road, John and Don, John and Don Bell, area property owners. All of the letters express support for the application and indicate no concerns with the proposed development. I can read any of the above submissions and follow the request to committee. A letter of support has also been received from Ken and Margaret Hines owner of 1157 Coat Road. The letter is summarized as follows. We are writing to express our support of the proposed sleeping cabin. This is a reasonable request. The structure was originally built in the late 1960s, early 1970s in a very basic and rustic way and has always functioned as a sleeping cabin. Ian and Bev see at every turn to work with the natural beauty around them rather than conquer it. Examples of this are found in how the and how they plan their current project without rock blasting and to minimize the loss of trees. Requiring them to change their sleeping cabin into a slightly smaller cabin would create mounds of garbage and unnecessarily require lots of fossil fuels to be used for machinery and tools. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval of the application, staff recommend the following conditions or condition. A requirement to enter into a satisfactory development agreement to define the use of the proposed sleeping cabin. Staff have no, ver no further comments and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here who wishes to speak on this? Yes. I believe we have Landy Dennis. Uh, Mark Berman. Oh, okay. Here, uh, for the oh, changed around, okay. <laughs> Uh, good morning, um, Chair Edwards and uh, committee. Uh, Lenny Dennis, Wayne Simpson and Associates. I uh, represent the owner uh, there online today observing. I'm also here with uh, Riley Furman from uh, Health Road Construction. Uh, I think that's a fair and accurate assessment of the proposal as presented by the, the uh, planner. Um, just wanted to, and, and I do appreciate the efforts uh, and working with the planning staff bringing the application uh, forward. I just wanted to uh, provide the merits and, and a brief synopsis of the, the highlights, uh, bring forward some of the highlights that were in the staff report as well. Um, it's a very low profile 
uh, structure. It's uh, modestly oversized. Um, it's well buffered uh, from the abutting property owners. In fact, dwellings cannot be seen. Uh, I think between the height of the property and the distance from the shoreline and out in the lake, uh, the, uh, uh, the cabin, uh, would the, the visual impact would be indiscernible and, uh, and, and uh, uh, extremely <laughs> non-existent, if you will. Uh, the lot coverage is noted by staff is 3.7%, uh, which is well below the maximum permitted for the property. So it's certainly not overbuilt. Um, I think I certainly think between the frontage and the area and the depth, uh, the lot can quite comfortably accommodate um, the uh, proposed uh, sleeping cabin. And in fact, from a septic perspective, uh, the, um, the building department had no concerns with the with the application. Uh, because uh, there's no change um, in the exterior of the building at all, it uh, uh, reduces and minimizes any ecological disturbance uh, to the to the lot. Uh, the development agreement uh, will ensure the long-term uh, use of that uh, proposed sleeping cabin uh, will remain as a as a sleeping uh, cabin, and certainly with the letters of support, um, the neighborhood is is in agreement with the proposed. Uh, with the proposal and uh, like the uh, the, uh, the fact of the matter is it's also on a very flat uh, level uh, area um, as well uh, there's no other uh, performance standards uh, requests required uh, just simply that one uh, with the increased size of a of a sleeping cabinet and uh, i would respectfully submit uh, like township staff that the application passes the uh, four tests and uh, and with respect to the request, uh, the committee approved the application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dennis. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? Um, anyone wish to speak in opposition? No. And I'd like to thank you for getting letters of uh, support and talking to the neighbors. It makes it an, an awful lot easier getting stuff through. And thank you for that. Are there any questions or comments from the uh, committee? Seeing none. Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A8921 Rhodes Armitage to permit the conversion of an existing dwelling to a sleeping cabin with an attached mechanical room is hereby approved, with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a sleeping cabin to have a floor area of 776 square feet. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision is subject to the following condition. One, that a satisfactory development agreement be entered into to define the use of the proposed sleeping cabin. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Bye. And the next application is A9021. And that is Hughes, and that is Ms. Walker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-90-21 in the name of Hughes. The subject property is known municipally as 1015 Roberts Bay Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 218 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a hot tub with a stone patio. Relief is requested from the minimum front yard setback of 66 feet. The proposed hot tub is to be 41.5 feet from the high water mark. The variance requested is 24.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 12 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by Nick Snyder, the township's, township's chief building official, indicating he has no objections. The second submission is by Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, indicating the public works department has no comments. Two letters of support have been received for this application. The first is from Sean Donaldson, an area property owner. The submission is as follows. When I bought my property two doors down from the Hughes's around the same time they had bought their property, as they had bought their property, it appeared as though the property's vegetation had eroded away with clay and sand all across the front of the property. What they have been able to accomplish in revegetating the waterfront in a very healthy way is, a, is great for the bay. 
when I sit on my dock looking at their property, it looks much better than it did when I, they took possession with much more vegetative buffer. I am in full support of the town allowing the Hughes to keep the hot tub where it is rather than disrupt the property anymore. The second letter of support is by Paul Donaldson. The submission is as follows. This letter is to show my support for the Hughes' minor variance on 1015 Roberts Bay Road. I personally was on this property as soon as the Hughes bought it and before they closed. There were no trees between the lake and the existing teardown and it was just clay surface with grass that was intermittent between the lake and the cottage. The sand beach shoreline was eroded from tiny mini streams running down over existing soils. What they have done with this property from an aesthetic point of view from the water front is absolutely amazing. And I think this variance for the hot tub to be left where it is does not affect the vegetative buffer compared to what it is. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering approval of the application, staff recommend the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the renaturalization of the shoreline buffer and requirements for disposal of wastewater from the hot tub. Staff have no further comments and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? The applicant. Okay. Bring them in, please. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name is Richard Hughes. I'm the applicant, 1015 Roberts Bay Road, uh, Muskoka Lakes, POC1HO. I'd like to thank the council and uh, the chairman for looking at our minor variance application. I'm just here to answer any questions anyone may have. All right, thank you very much, sir. You're I welcome. Have, I have to ask, is there anyone here who wishes to speak in support? Anyone in opposition? Yeah. Other questions from the members? Yes, member Grogan Green. Am I, can you hear me? Yes, yes I, can. I can hear you. My question relates to some of the lawn that I see within the sort of first 50 feet of the shore. Yes. When the planners discuss that they wanna see a little bit more renaturalization, does that mean that that lawn is going to be gone because that must be something that requires a lot of maintenance and cutting. Not to the best of my knowledge. So That's, it's simply grass that stays short? That not to, to the best of my knowledge, that is not, uh, unless the planners have something else, they haven't said, I've got to take the lawn out. I think they want me to revegetate towards the lake. You'll notice I put a lot of trees in but I think it's related to that. Maybe plan the uh, planning could clarify. Uh, yes, uh, before I bring Mr. Sharp in, uh, there is a thing, a satisfactory site plan agreement with securities and uh, renaturalization of the shoreline. But I will let Mr. Uh, Sharp speak. Just have to mute everything here. Edwards, I could speak to Edwards, that. Edwards, I see um, that uh, Ms. Walker also has her screen on and may wish to uh, chime in or further elaborate, but uh, you know, that is correct. There is a condition that uh, uh, requires uh, some renaturalization of the, the front yard area. Um, what that uh, will look like if committee approves the application, um, you know, it, it will largely uh, be um, dependent on um, some considerations and conversations between uh, Mr. Hughes and, and staff, but certainly we're looking to uh, uh, revegetate uh, portions of the, the front yard area. Mr. Hughes has already undertaken um, um, some plantings in the front yard area, which is, is beneficial um, over the previous condition. Um, but I think we'd be looking, uh, you know, I would say that those plantings are largely off to the sides of the property and we'd be looking to uh, um, fill in uh, over the front yard area with some some additional plantings. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Walker, did you want to say anything? 
Um, through you, Chair Edwards, I just wanted to make a note that um, we've agreed through the current site plan agreement process. There's a note on the site plan saying those grass areas won't be fertilized. Um, and I think the intent of going forward was, like Mr. Sharp said, to fill in some of the um, shoreline buffer, in particular some shrubs um, along the shoreline. Yeah, I mean. Yes, oh, you're, you're muted. My understanding of the vegetated buffer is that it be naturalized in large measure. And I don't think that manicured grasses qualify as a veg naturally vegetated buffer. In most cases, like in Muskoka, your, your natural shoreline has a lot of willows and iris and various things. It, it isn't grass. And, it, and if it was grass, and it wasn't maintained, it wouldn't last for long. It would turn into something else over time. And I just think, you know, as beautiful as this, as this front yard is, it looks like a manicured city property. And there may be a lot of that ve vegetation on the edges, but in front of the cottage, there's very little vegetation. So, you know, it, there's a beautiful patio. I think, it, I think it's nice, but it, it isn't enough in terms of protecting the shoreline. So I, I think it has to be clearer what is going to be vegetated and what is not. Like to the right of the hot tub on the drawing, there's just a grassed area. And I, I don't think that's acceptable. From my understanding, my understanding was that planning had put provision in place where that hot tub is not approved unless they accept the site plan. So it is conditional upon me satisfying planning with a site plan that shows vegetation that makes them happy with what we're going to proceed with. Mm. Uh, just a second on Mr. Sharpin, just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, Maybe just to, to further elaborate on my, my previous comments, um, you know, could certainly, you know, if committee wishes to uh, provide some insight uh, with respect to, to what committee would like to see in the front yard area. Um, but I would indicate that, you know, the variance that is in front of committee is for the hot tub. I would say that the hot tub is, is largely already screened by the plantings that have been uh, undertaken in the, the front yard area. Um, Member Grogan Green is, is correct. The zoning bylaw does require um, uh, a shoreline buffer 50 feet in depth from the high water mark um, with plantings uh, at a density of 100 uh, square feet. Um, but I think, you know, I think what we're looking at is what is reasonable in the context of the property and the official plan policies speak to an overall net improvement in vegetation over existing conditions when a property is being redeveloped. And we'll certainly um, look to, like I said, through the, the site plan control process to um, uh, have a further improvement in vegetation, um, additional trees, additional um, medium height shrubs, all native uh, species. Um, and I can assure you that, uh, you know, we won't, we won't be um, approving uh, any a site plan or fulfilling any condition if this application is approved unless uh, we're satisfied that those measures um, are complete and, and satisfactory to the, to the township, uh, according to the policies that we have in place. Thank you. Okay, Member Grogan Green, or like, uh, does that satisfy you on that? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. It should be conditional. How can, how can you not hear me when I, can you hear me now? I can hear you because you okay. were muted before. All right. <laughs> uh, hit, I've hit the button 50 times since, since I started chatting. So uh, I don't, um, I personally think it should be conditional on the grass being removed. I mean, I'm sorry, but why are we even approving this? I mean, the, the reality of it is the hot tub shouldn't be there in the first place. And uh, in light of the fact that um, we're approving it, I guess, um, we should be demanding that certain things that we don't like change. And personally, I don't like seeing grass down near the shoreline. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I would make that a condition. Okay, thank you. And uh, Member Quinn, you had a 
Comment? Yeah. Um, I, I would have to, I know that property from pre pre development and, and like the letter said, it was a lot longer kind of a grassy clay run. And there was a lot more, I think there's a lot more storm management and a better situation than Mr. Hughes started with on this property. And if we could get a bit more planting, that would be nice. But I think that the township has probably already had him do a lot of stuff along the way. And if he's done it on his own, uh, he's a good, good steward to the, to the area. But I believe that it is a lot better today than it was five years ago. Thank you. Any other comments? I, I will say that, that um, we have had presentations from the Watershed Council. They are recommending native plants and they showed us all the reasons and I'm sure planning staff are, are aware of all this. And I think with site plan agreement, uh, they, can, they can help out in that. It's not only trees, it's, it's shrubs and everything that are native that, that stop it. And it's to protect the, the, the lakes. And this is one of our, our, our big things with the environment now. So I'm sure that they can work something out with that. And um, I will read this. Move by member Quinn, second by member Creaser, be it resolved that application A9021 Hughes to permit the construction of a hot tub is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to rent a hot tub 41.5 feet at the closest point from the high water mark. This variance is granted shown on the plan attached to the notice of the decision is subject to the following condition. One that is satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with security for renaturalization of the shoreline buffer and requirements for disposal of wastewater from the hot tub. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you, Council and Chairman. Welcome. And the next application is A9120, the deal. And that is Ms. Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A9121 in the name of Badida. The subject property is known municipally as 1291 Skeleton Lake Road, Skeleton Lake 2 Road, unit number 14. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 232 to 233 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect, excuse me, sorry. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to reconstruct and enlarge an existing dock. Relief is requested from existing lot of record requirements. A building lot is required to have 100 feet of frontage and 15,000 square feet of area. The subject property has 68.5 feet of frontage and 13,862 square feet of area. Variance requested will permit an existing dock to be reconstructed and enlarged on an undersized lot. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. Submissions were received from the township's public works technician, Tim Sopko, and he has indicated no objection. And the second is from the township's chief building official, Nick Snyder, and he has indicated no objection. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no concerns. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And, uh... We have uh, the applicant or applicant's agent here. I believe the applicant is here. I'm bringing him in. Okay, very good. Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. Can everybody hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Right, I'm Eric Munz of the Dakota Group, uh, 1A Lee Valley Drive. Unit 3 in Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Um, first off, just thank you, staff, for the report. Um, I will be fairly quickly here as this is a pretty, pretty straightforward application. I think just the main thing uh, I just want to point out is that the 
dog edition does comply with all other aspects of the bylaw, with setbacks, projections, um, everything. Um, the only thing is that it's an undersized lot, but we are not expanding on any of the, the structures on, on land at this time. So I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody may have, and thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak on this application, either for or against? No. no? Are there questions from the members? Seeing now, I'll read you. Okay. My member, Brogan Green. Second by member Quinn, be it resolved that application A 1921 DM to permit the reconstruction and enlargement of an existing dock is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit an existing dock to be reconstructed and enlarged on an undersized lot. This variance is granted shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you all. Have a good day. And the next application is A9221 Clifford. And that is Ms. Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A9221 in the name of Clifford. The subject property is known municipally as 1496 Mortimer's Plain Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 252 through 257 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to demolish a one-story dwelling and a one-story boathouse with an associated dock, a shed and a playhouse, and to construct a new one-story dwelling with, walkout, with a walkout basement and associated sun decks and a one-story boathouse with an associated dock. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage on a category one lake of 10%. The proposed lot coverage on the entire lot is proposed to be 10.6 or 3,935 square feet the proposed lot coverage within 200 feet is proposed to be 11% or 3,935 square feet. Variances requested is 0.6% or 213 square feet and 1% or 356 square feet respectively over what is permitted. Relief is also requested from a front yard setback requirement of 50 feet. The proposed dwelling will be 38 feet. Variance requested is 12 feet. Relief is also requested from the front yard setback requirements of 40 feet. The proposed sun deck is 31 feet from the high water mark. The variance requested is nine feet. Relief is also requested from the front yard setback requirements of 50 feet for a new sun deck. The second sun deck is proposed to be 34 feet from the high water mark and the variance requested is 16 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission was from the township's public works technician, Tim Sopko, and he indicated no objection. The second is from the township's chief building official, Nick Snyder, and he has indicated no objection. The third submission is a letter of support from an area neighbor, Paul and Christine Shaw, and I can read this, this, le this letter in full if committee would like. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and recommend that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for plantings, for revegetation, uh, for retention of vegetation and to address stormwater management through the completion and implementation of a stormwater management plan prepared by a professional engineer. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here? We have uh, the agent. agent. Okay. to be accepting the offer, but we do have someone else with the Okay, it was, if, uh, anybody wishes to be in support first? I'm not sure. Okay, you can bring them in then and we'll...
Good morning. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, my name is Mike Guyry. I'm here with Betty Clark. We are the uh, owners of the property next door at 1492 Mortimer Point Road, POB 1J0. Okay. Um, we're well familiar with the uh, with the property. It was in our family from 1905 to about 2000. We have a uh, concern first off with the moving of the boathouse. Uh, we're wondering first off why they're tearing down a boathouse that's only 10 years old and moving it closer to our property line, uh, thereby impacting, well, our view of the lake, our uh, swimming area, et cetera. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, yes. Uh, also with, the, with regards to the, the dwelling itself, we noticed that they're wanting to put in a full basement. Uh, as I said, we're fairly familiar with the property and believe that the current building is sitting on bedrock now. So does that mean they're gonna to have to blast to make a full basement? And if they do, what is our recourse? Should that blasting affect our foundations? Okay. Um, yeah, we're just wondering, you know, can could they move the boathouse to the other side of the property rather than close closer to ours. And I guess lastly, we're wondering if there's any idea when this might start. Thank okay, you thank for your you. time. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't believe the owner or the owner's agent is here, are they? So we can't get answers on this. Uh, uh, they just raised their hand. Pardon? They're coming in now. Oh, they are coming in now, yeah. okay. Hello, good morning. This is Alex Forshu talking. Is this the, um, is this section G regarding Clifford? Yes. Yes, it is. Sorry, I had technical difficulties getting in uh, the meeting this morning. So I am the applicant's uh, agent. So I apologize for being late, uh, but okay. I am here to answer any questions there is. Uh, we need your full uh, name and address and postal code, please. Uh, this is Alexander Forshu with Forshu Design Associates uh, at 3 Lee Valley Drive, Unit 2, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Okay, thank you. And um, it said that it's going to have a full, full basement. Is that right? Will there be blasting required? Uh, yes, there will be blasting required. Uh, because the neighbor are asking if there's any damage to their house, how are they uh, protected? Uh, well, I would believe uh, the neighbor, like obviously um, blasting on adjacent properties and everything has happened on different uh, cases before. And I think that we would be hiring a definitely a professional to do this blasting work. Um, and I don't see any damages being done to the neighbor's property, but obviously in the, in the rare case that it would, obviously my client would be willing to um, reimburse the neighbor of any damages, but I don't foresee any damages being uh, incurred. Okay. Obviously a professional would have to, uh, the subcontractor would have to weigh in on that. Um, mm -hmm. But I would believe that if there were any uh, problems that were forethought, then we would be talking to Mr. Neighbor about those things. Okay, thank you. And uh, they also had uh, concerns about the uh, boathouse. Is it moving closer to the property line? It is moving closer to the property line just to, and it, it's very marginal. I would say the boathouse is very close to the property line as it is, uh, but it's just to make sure that 
uh, views from our client's property are maintained and they obviously paid a substantial amount of money for their view. So we're wanting to maximize that as much as possible. The, the plan is to be a single story boathouse and not as impactful as a two story boathouse, obviously because of uh, straight line frontage. Um, but it is supposed to be moving um, marginally, yes. Okay. Uh, he talked about, uh, sorry, he talked about their view of the lake. What about ours? The closer they bring that to our property line, the more impacted our view is of the lake. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, right now it's gone to the uh, committee, so uh, you can't comment anymore on that. Uh, are there questions from the members? Uh, can I ask the uh, existing boathouse, uh, how far is it from the property line now and how far will it be in uh, when it's rebuilt? Uh, currently it is the closest point. The dock would be uh, around 40 feet. Mm -hmm. We're planning on moving it basically adjacent to the 30 foot setback line. So we'd be moving around the 10 feet to the north, closer to the neighbor's property. And this is all within uh, the current bylaws uh, with dock setbacks and boathouse setbacks as well. We're not looking to uh, interfere with any existing uh, dock or boathouse setbacks as per the bylaw. Okay, thank you. Are there questions from the members? I believe Mr. Quinn, you had your hand up. Yes, I just, um, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's uh, the dock is at 29, uh, 29 feet, uh, 10 inches, nine and a half inches. And that's the dock. And I think the wall of that boathouse by bylaw would be required to be at 30 feet. So there's no variance um, on that side of it. Uh, and I, I, it looks like the neighbor have an existing shed they'd have to look through to see this boathouse from where their cottage would be. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else wish to, to comment on, on this? Okay, I will read uh, the resolution. Moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Creaser. Be it resolved that application A9221 Clifford to remit the demolition of a one story dwelling and associated sun deck patio, a one story boathouse with an associated dock, a shed, and a playhouse, and the construction of a one story dwelling with a walkout basement and associated sun deck, and a one story boathouse with the associated dock is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 3,935 square feet or 10.6 on the entire lot. To permit a lot coverage of 3,935 square feet or 11% within the lot area 200 feet from the high water mark. Three, to permit a dwelling to be 38 feet at the closest point from the high water mark. Four, to permit a sun deck to be 31 feet at the closest point from the high water mark. Five, to permit a sun deck extending off the main level of a, the proposed dwelling to be 34 feet at the closest point from the high water mark. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following conditions. One, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for plantings, for retention of vegetation, and to address stormwater management through the uh, completion of an implemented implementation of a stormwater management plan subject to be, and it's prepared by a professional engineer. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of the decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Ms. Carey.
Okay. Um, we have unfinished business. That's A4821, Garcia. Uh, that's a delegation for 1045. At 1045, then we will take a break till 1045. Thank you very much. So we will uh, see you back here at 1045. Thank you.
Okay, I'd like to call the meeting back to order. And uh, we have some unfinished business. And that is um, A4821 Garcia. And that's Miss Darling. And I believe it's one at 1045, so you can start. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A4821 in the name of Garcia. The subject property is known municipally as 1004 Kitchener Street. The application was deferred at the September 13th, 2021 meeting. So the property owner could have discussions with a concerned neighbor, provide the township with revised elevation drawings if necessary, and advise if a new retaining wall is proposed and if it needs a building permit. It is the understanding of staff that the application's agent has tried multiple times to reach out to the concerned neighbor with no response. The agent has advised that the eaves have not changed and extend two feet from the exterior walls and the second story dormers do not extend beyond the eaves. The township's chief building official has advised that the Ontario Building Code does not require a building permit for the retaining wall. The site plan can be found on pages 264 and 266 of the agenda package. No changes have been made to the requested variance. The proposed dwelling will be 13.5 feet from the southerly lot line and five feet from the northerly lot line. The proposed sun deck and stairs will be 12.9 feet from the southerly lot line. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no concerns. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And um, do we have the agent or the applicant here? I believe we have an agent. We have the delegation, uh, Catherine White. Okay, uh, just a minute. Now that's okay. Yeah, okay. Bring her in then. Hi, everybody. Hello. So do you guys have any questions or concerns for us? Uh, can you give me your name, address, and uh, post a code? You're allowed to put your, your video on if you'd like as well. Okay. There we go. Um, so our ad my name is Catherine White. Um, the address is 7735 Kennedy, Kennedy Road um, Street, Brampton. The postal code is L6W. Zero A two. Okay. What would you like to say? Um, so we have provided you guys with the engineer drawings for that retaining wall, which we are proposing to demolish and then rebuild as is. Um, we have attempted to reach out to the northeasterly neighbor in order to address their concerns, and with that neighbor has not responded to us regarding any of their concerns. Um, and we have provided you guys with a site plan that shows the intended parking arrangement. Okay. Thank you very much. And is there anyone else here that wishes, wishes to speak in, speak in support of this application? No. Anyone in opposition? No. Okay. Are there questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Quinn. Um, the neighbor that had concerns before, they would have been notified of the results of the last meeting. And I want to know what they did to try and get a hold of them. So we have sent our Maria Garcia, the property owner, has sent multiple texts to this neighbor. She has tried calling. Um, all of these we have screenshots of, and we would be happy to provide with you, to you guys. And, and through the staff, they would have been notified of the last results of, it, of us putting it, adjourning it and putting it off for a future uh, consideration. Um, and that, Ms. Darling, would you like to answer that? Um, I'm just confirming if they got a notice of decision. So if they had asked for a notice, but the sure. thing is that it was... Um, there's no decision because it was def like adjourned. Deferred. So I know that they were at the meeting 
that day. So like she good. was there. They have at some the meeting, so she. So they would have had some onus then to be cognizant or looking for something from the neighbor or some communication. If they're I at the meeting. Okay. You've answered my question. That's fine. Thank you. I believe Mr. Sharp's going to like clarify. Okay. What Just I one second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mulholland can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe the uh, the neighbor that had expressed concerns had requested notify notification, and therefore uh, we didn't um, follow up with uh, that with that neighbor advising them of this uh, meeting today. Um, so um, I don't know if that provides uh, the insight that you're looking for, uh, Member Quinn. I'm happy to elaborate if needed. Thank you. Uh, I believe that my question was answered that they were at the last meeting and not just a submission. So they knew uh, where we were heading and, and uh, that there was to be some communication. And if they've chosen not to do it, I'm satisfied. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Move by Member Quinn, sec by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A4821 Garcia to permit the demolition of a two-story dwelling, a portion of a dock, and a one-story boathouse, and the construction of a two-story dwelling with an associated sun deck, and a one-story boathouse with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dwelling to be 13.5 feet from the south easterly interior lot line. Two, to permit a dwelling to be five feet from northerly interior lot line. Three, to permit a sun deck with stairs associated with the dwelling to be 12.5, sorry, 12.9 feet from the northern, northerly interior side lot line. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That is carried. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, so the next is uh, information items. And uh, Rachel, would you like to handle that one? And uh, you just turn it. Thank you. Thank you. And through you, Chair Edwards. <clears throat> this report, which can be found on page 267 of the agenda package, has been brought to committee for informational purposes regarding recent amendments to the Planning Act. On January 1st, 2022, several amendments to the Planning Act came into effect through both Bill 213, the Better for People and Smarter for Business Act, and Bill 276, the Supporting Recovery and Competitiveness Act. While these bills amend a number of pieces of legislation, the report highlights the amendments to the Planning Act that mainly affects rules surrounding subdivision <laughs> control. These include Section 5345 now allows the ability to issue a certificate of cancellation for a prior consent. The main takeaway for this amendment is that it'll more easily allow abutting lots to merge where previous consent has been granted in a more efficient way. The previous process was done through what is known as a breaking of consent, which consisted of transferring small parcels of land to another owner. This changed the original lot configuration, essentially having the effect of breaking a consent. It was often a confusing mm -hmm. undertaking that wasn't always successful. This amendment will fix these issues and the new process only requires that a request for the cancellation of consent be accompanied with an explanation for why the cancellation is needed and evidence of the current consent. Please be advised that direction from council is being sought in order to delegate authority to issue certificates of cancellation to staff and to require an administrative fee for processing. The next item is a certificate of consent for retained lands, which uh, can now be requested. This will allow a cleaner title for retained lands where before there was only consent certificates available for severed lots. Please be advised that council approval to include an additional fee for certificate of retained lands is also being sought. The next item is the timeline for fulfilling conditions uh, for provisional consent has now been extended from one year to two years. This will allow more time for things like um, uh, getting surveyors and uh, other things that have uh, taken a long time since COVID. And finally, purchasers will now be allowed to apply for consent. Um, 
This staff report was distributed to the Committee of Adjustment and all those registered to receive notification through the meeting agenda electronic notification system and was published on the township's website in accordance with the township's procedural bylaw. And I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mahone. Are there any questions? No questions. Well, you get off easy. Good. Okay. Um, so we have some new business. And uh, who's looking after that? Um, cancellation of uh, consent for uh, B. Oh, sorry. Uh, we, um, there, yeah, there's a, under information items, there's also um, the uh, conference to speak to. Okay, yes, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Just no, um, <laughs> Let me just get this off again. Yeah, we just included a, oh, sorry, through you, Chair, thank you. We just included a link to um, the um, Ontario Association of Committee of Adjustments oh, Conference. Um, which is taking place in Peterborough, September 28th through the 30th, uh, which is a Wednesday to uh, Friday. So there will be no conflict with Committee of Adjustments. Um, and then um, if you wish to attend the conference, um, the link is provided to you uh, to register. And, and so if you guys want to... And that, that date again? Uh, September 28th to the 30th, 2022. Okay. And if um, you guys want to discuss... Um, the attendance of that or um, email me later or okay, have any questions. In the no, they're not this spring. I think they've made it a little later uh, because of COVID. Would any of it be streamed or is it live? It's live. Totally live. I won't be going. And Alan, I can I can do a quick introduction if you want before uh, we bring in the, I, the agent. Or do you, do you want it? Yeah, I have the. Okay. The, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's uh, going to introduce that one. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, am I unmuted? Yes, thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, it is staff's recommendation that a certificate of cancellation be approved for consent B583-78 ML. Please see the key map and consent sketches starting on page 270 of the agenda package. As discussed uh, just now, on January 1st, 2022, several planning act amendments under Bill 213, Better for People, Smarter for Business Act, and Bill 276, Supporting Recovery and Competitiveness Act, Competitive Act came into effect, including the ability for a property owner or their agent to request a cancellation of consent for previously conveyed lands in section 5345 of the Planning Act. A request from the agent for Patricia Lorimer, the property owner at 1010 Roberta Drive, roll number 411073, was re received on February 8, 2022 to cancel consent B583 78 ML. This certificate of cancellation will allow the property owner to merge her lots to allow for future development. The key map and consent sketches were distributed to the Committee of Adjustment and all those registered to receive notification through the meeting agenda, electronic notification system, and were published on the township's website in accordance with the township's procedural bylaw. Um, I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, are there any uh, questions on that one? There's, there's a delegation for that one. Okay. So we'll bring the delegation in. Good morning, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, so um, my name is Melissa Cope. I'm that agent or the lawyer representing Patricia Lynn Lorimer. My office is located at 61 Joseph Street, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Um, the secretary treasurer just provided you a report 
regarding the amendments to the Planning Act that became effective as of January 1st this year, including the amendment allowing for an administrative method to cancel existing consents. Um, like she discussed, prior to this amendment to the Planning Act, we used to break existing consents by transferring a small parcel of land to the township or to a budding property owner that required the applicants to go through a whole severance consent process. Um, so like the secretary said, my client submitted a request to the township by email and some follow-up responses back and forth um, for a cancellation certificate under the new section 53 sub 45 of the Planning Act to cancel a prior consent, specifically a consent granted in 1978, B58378ML. Um, the reason we requested the consent is she owns both the retained and severed lands from that prior consent, as well as additional lands um, that she wishes to be treated as one lot, and they're all contained within the same pin. Um, when we submitted our request, we provided background information, title particulars, um, and also a copy of a draft certificate of cancellation for consideration by um, the committee and, and the staff. Um, Concurrently with this application, my clients also submitted an application to deem lots to be heard by council on March 16th as the applicant owns the entirety of lot seven and also lot eight on plan 36 Medora and additional land. So the deeming bylaw and this request for cancellation together would ensure that the entire pin, her whole lot is treated as one lot for planning act purposes and would allow them to apply for building permits for one cohesive lot instead of kind of partial lots. Um, so we're requesting the committee to support Mrs. Lorimer's request for a certificate of cancellation under section 53 sub 45 of the Planning Act and enable the secretary treasurer to sign a certificate that we would then register on title to cancel the prior certificate granted. Um, the effect of the certificate and the deeming bylaws we've applied to would be to merge all of the lands owned by Mrs. Lorimer in this one pin um, and ensure that they're treated as one lot, not multiple lots for planning act purposes. So I'm available to answer any questions that we have regarding the particular request by the Lormers. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Cope. And uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? No. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Yes. No? Questions from the members? Uh, yes, Member Quinn. So we don't really get to, to read a report on this. And I guess it's been legislated that it happens. So it comes to us for consideration for, for, for cancellation of the consent, but I, I don't fully follow the process. I don't know that they need us at this point. Uh, Mr. Sharp. Through you, Chair Edwards, and uh, you know, thank you for your question, Member Quinn. This is all very new uh, to us as well. But what I, what may be helpful if I just uh, reiterate or review the process that's typically undertaken in the case where there is a requirement to merge lands to a lot that was created uh, by consent. In other words, the lot was um, a previous a, a, a lot that was created by consent. Mm -hmm. So typically what we do is there's a condition um, on a lot addition application um, requiring a, a legal undertaking confirming that the lands will merge. And in often in, in a lot of cases uh, where this comes up, there's a requirement to break what we refer to as breaking consent. And that may be as simple as literally uh, surveying one square foot and adding it to an adjoining property. And that breaks that previous consent, allowing the um, severed lands to merge with the benefiting lot that they're intended to be added to. Um, what this new process allows is it just eliminates that entire uh, process and allows um, an applicant to come forward um, with an application to cancel that previous consent, having the effect um, of emerging the land similar to, to breaking consent. It's, it's quite technical and I hope I'm not losing you in my explanation here. I'm uh, doing the best I can to try to explain it, um, but it's largely a technical exercise that, that frequently uh, happens um, in, in the township. And I, and I think this new process will simplify it. And it's certainly something that could uh, um, be undertaken at the, the staff level. Um, 
Mr. Pink may wish to jump in here. Um, it may be that we, you know, we would look to your direction with respect to whether you want to see these types of applications or whether they can be um, uh, delegated to, to staff. That's likely something that council would need to decide on. Um, but you know that that sort of provides a bit of an overview of the process. I'm happy to uh, to elaborate or dive into it uh, further if, if that would be helpful. Thanks. Um, I think you've answered my question somewhat, and I agree it's quite a, uh, the, the system did need changed up because quite often it's hard to do that one square foot transfer and, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of paperwork to get there. I just wanted to know that, that staff or somebody is approving, because we're not really seeing a report, but maybe in some cases they're taking a chunk off of, of uh, you know, an undersized lot, and I, I just would like to know that somebody's watching over the process or that there's more information than just paperwork happening. Yes, thank you, just a second. In most cases, uh, the removal of a square foot wouldn't uh, impact uh, uh, you know, the, the lot size, but I suppose it, it could happen. And uh, that would be where Ms. Mulholland would, would step in and, and she reviews uh, you know, reference plans that come in that are associated with uh, consent applications quite diligently. Um, but really this new process of canceling consent is intended to eliminate that entirely. Uh, so there would need, there would no longer be a need to, uh, quote unquote, break consent, uh, through the, the surveying and addition of, of, you know, one, one square foot. I see Mr. Pink has his screen on and may wish to elaborate further. Thanks. I, I wasn't concerned about the one square foot. I was concerned about maybe the piece that was being merged to the other piece or the, con the, 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 the cancellation of the consent. David, would you like to say something? I just wanted to clarify, uh, good morning committee, and um, just on the previous question, uh, staff has never been delegated authority to obviously to approve of consents, and this is a new initiative, so we wouldn't have authority to cancel consents either. Uh, the report that Ms. Mulholland just presented will also be going to planning committee this week uh, with a recommendation to council to grant uh, that authority, uh, to delegate that authority to staff. Uh, so this may be the only time you see uh, these two requests on the agenda today. Uh, we presume in the future that that uh, will be delegated uh, to staff. I don't believe, as Mr. Scherf uh, correctly pointed out, this will eliminate the need to break consent. So there won't be a concern there. And I don't believe you'd have a concern about uh, resultant uh, undersized lot. It would only be able to merge whole size parcels. It wouldn't be able to merge uh, a part of a parcel. So you won't have a, uh, a remnant or retained lot that could be undersized. Uh, but staff, uh, as would any delegation of authority, we would review uh, any application or request uh, thoroughly to ensure there's no uh, unintended consequences or impl implications. Thank you. Thank you. David, while you're there, um, if somebody owns say lot seven and they own lot eight and it's in the same name, does it not automatically merge or has that been, been changed? It, uh, through the chair, it would depend entirely on how those lots are created. Uh, so if the lots are whole lots on a plan of subdivision, or if they were previously created by consent, uh, then two lots abutting one another in the same name will not necessarily or will not merge. Uh, lots that were not created by consent uh, were not on a plan of subdivision. Yes, that, uh, that can be the effect. Um, so what this uh, change will allow to do um, in the past, if the lot was created by consent, there's really no way to have those parcels merge unless they come to committee and transfer a square foot uh, or somehow change the configuration of the lot, uh, which is quite a technical and somewhat odd process, I think, for the public or landowners to wrap their head around. It's, it's very technical. I'm sure Ms. Cope would, uh, I'm sure has had many conversations with clients. Uh, it's a difficult explanation to them as to what has to occur. And I think the province, uh, in this case, rightfully has reviewed this section of the Planning Act, hasn't, hasn't done so in, in many, many years. And this will just simplify that process and allow mergers to occur uh, 
your way a simple request to the municipality. And again, staff's recommending that that authority be delegated to staff. Uh, we should hear from council on that in a, in a month's time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Member Quinn. Also, um, uh, to answer maybe a bit of your question, Chair Edwards, is that there's two registration systems, one being land registry and one right. being land titles. And land titles, they don't just merge. Where land registry, you have to watch. Yeah. Do or don't. Well, that's what I was asking because I thought if they just registered it, then it would it would merge automatically. But I just want to make sure. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'll read this resolution. Uba Member Creaser, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that the cancellation of consent for B583 slash 78 ML Lormer is hereby approved. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. And the next one is um, consideration of cancel of, of uh, consent, and that is uh, B B sixty six sixteen ML Noonan and Macintosh. And there's somebody to speak on that. Okay. Thank you, Annie. I think did you still need to turn it down? Yeah. Thank you. And through you, Chair Edwards. It is staff's recommendation that a certificate of cancellation be approved for consent B6616 ML. Please see the key map and consent sketches starting on page 273 of the agenda package. A request from the agent for David Noonan and Debbie McIntosh, the property owners at property roll number 9801203 with no assigned address was, address, was received on March 1st, 2022 to cancel consent B6616 ML. This certificate of cancellation will allow the property owners to proceed with the lot addition that was approved in application B4621 ML. The key map and consent sketches were distributed to Committee of Adjustment and all those registered to receive notification through the meeting and agenda electronic notification system and were published by the township's website in accordance with the township's procedural bylaw. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Yes, if you could bring the delegation in, that would be great. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Maholland has summarized it well. The request is based on uh, the notice of decision granted last October uh, for a lot addition. And in order to have it merge with the abutting lot, which was created by consent, it's necessary to uh, have the previous consent canceled and hence the reason for our request. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Hey, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here who is to speak in support or opposition to this application? So um, just so that I, I get this, because I, I know there was an awful lot on this. So you're, you're taking basically a lot that is uh, 224.5 and merging with one that's 296.73. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and there's no, um, and that, okay. Um, now, would that uh, allow further severance rights? Uh, yeah, I'd like to, to hear that.
Thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, some members uh, um, that don't sit on council may not be as familiar uh, with the process that's uh, been undertaken to date with uh, the creation of the subject lands. Um, but there was a, a lot addition that required a zoning bylaw amendment for certain exemptions um, from the zoning bylaw with respect to these properties to allow this lot addition to occur. Um, those applications were approved by council in October. And essentially what's happening is, is um, lands were, were severed and those severed lands are intended to be added to an abutting uh, lot or benefiting lands. And the benefiting lands were created by consent. So as uh, Mr. McEachern correctly pointed out, uh, with these changes to the Planning Act, there is a requirement to cancel consent. Um, during the review of the applications in October, um, there were concerns expressed by members of the public with respect to the potential of further uh, subdivision of the lands. So I would note that um, because of the way that these uh, site-specific approvals have been set up respecting the lands, as well as the current waterfront residential WR4 zoning, there would be a requirement uh, if, if the lands were subdivided in the future, there would be a requirement to come back to the township and gain further exemptions uh, from those bylaws. And there was also a condition imposed uh, by council, a condition of consent that requires the owners, that requires the owners to enter into an agreement wherein they would agree not to further subdivide the lands. Um, and that agreement also requires um, that the lands be serviced with uh, wells, which is an unrelated matter. Um, so I don't know if that provides uh, the insight that you're looking for, uh, Chair Edwards, um, but it does uh, provide, um, like I said, an additional level of oversight with respect to um, future lot creation. And if there were ever applications submitted in the future, of course, staff would review the file and look to uh, the agreement that was registered on title as part of this process or that will be registered on title as part of this process, um, wherein the, the owners are, have agreed not to further subdivide. And, and I would expect that that would have a uh, uh, play a factor in our, our recommendations and council's uh, consideration of, of those applications. Thank you. Okay, so in other words, that would be registered on uh, title that it could be further seven. Okay, the site plan agreement. Is uh, are there any uh, questions on that? Because this did go to um, a, a hearing, and and they got the lots, and they, they had to cut them back. So, uh, as long as it's it's in it, they cannot uh, sever them in the future. I would uh, support this. Any other questions? No. Okay. Moved by Member Rogan Green, second by Member Creaser. Be it resolved that cancellation of consent for B6616 ML Newen and Macintosh is hereby approved. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Are you in favor? Okay. That is carried. And I guess the next one is the one we've been looking for. Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that the meeting adjourned at 11.18 a.m. Calls in favor. Thank you. We'll see you next month. <laughs>